Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. This is going to be a no-nonsense moon easter egg guide. Let's do this. As always with my guides, if you get stuck at any point, there'll be some extra bonus info in the description to help you along your way, and you can always ask people in the comments as well. Before you get into the game, two things to note. First of all, you need two or more players in order to complete this easter egg, and secondly, you're going to need the Immolation Liquidation Gobble Gum on pretty much everyone because there's a fair amount of box spinning to be done, and that gobble will save you a lot of time. I also think the Round Robin Gobble Gum could be useful because at some points you're going to want to get further into the rounds, and that's exactly what that gobble is going to do for you. I also recommend that you do the Shang Easter Egg first, because you actually had to do that in the old game, because you need the Focusing Stone from the Shangri-La Easter Egg, and it's just better to do these things chronologically. Also, if you somehow end up not having a Richtofen in your game, you're going to need to restart, because Richtofen has to be in the game. Now that you've started your game, first things first, turn on the power. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> By the way, throughout your game with your mystery box spins, whether it's from a regular spin or from Immolation Liquidation, you're going to be wanting to look for Gersh devices, the QEDs, and the Wave Gun. That's the Wonder Weapon on this map. The second thing you need to do is play Samantha Says. This is a game that you need to do at the spawn area of the map. There are four computers, and each of them correspond to a color. From left to right, those colors are red, green, blue, yellow you need to go over to the computers and hold square on any one of them, and what will happen is it will start the Samantha Says game. It will run through those four colors I've just mentioned, so you can remember which computer corresponds to which color, and then it will begin to blink you a pattern that will increase in length as you go through the game. So, for example, let's say it blinks the color red once, you need to go over to the computer that corresponds to the color red, which is the first one on the left, and hold square, and it will then blink you another pattern, for example, red-yellow, and so you need to do the same thing. Go and hold square on red, that's the first one on the left, and then on the computer that corresponds to yellow, which is the one on the right. Then it's going to give you a three-color pattern, and a four-color pattern, etc. And you've got to basically rinse and repeat this until you get all of the panels flash green, and then you've completed the step. You then need to go into the labs area of the map, where Deadshot can be found, and look around for the hacker. It's going to be a small, rectangular kind of, uh, I guess, leather pouch that will be on one of the walls in there, or on a desk or something along those lines, pick it up and bring it to this wall in the labs that contains four buttons, hack one of the buttons, and you'll then be on a timer to go around the labs and find these rectangular green lit up boxes and hack them all. There's going to be four lit up green in total, so get your teammates to run around the labs and point you towards the next green one, and once you've hacked all four, go back to the buttons and hold square on all four of them. Just scoot along the wall and hold square, hold square, hold square, hold square, or you can do it with your team all at the same time, but you can do this yourself, and if you've done the step, they should start sort of lighting up, the buttons that is, and you'll be ready to move on. You now need to wait for Tunnel 6 to get destroyed. And this can take a little bit of time, and that's why I recommended the Round Robin. Basically, the excavators on the map will periodically come down and break into the Biodome, or break into Tunnel 6, and you need Tunnel 6 to get broken into and depressurized, but there's no way to actually make that happen other than just going through rounds. Once the excavator starts coming down towards Tunnel 6 and breaks in, you need to take the hacker that you picked up earlier, and it will replace your spacesuit by the way, so watch out for that, and bring it back to the spawn area of the map, there should be a little panel, a control panel, that has a flashing green light on it, and you'll be able to hack that panel to get the excavator to lift back out of the tunnel, and you'll then be able to enter Tunnel 6 once more. Inside, you should find a spherical ball that might look a little familiar if you've been reading the comics or you've played Zombies for a while, and that ball is going to be your friend for pretty much the rest of this easter egg. Knife it, and it should fly into the air. You then need to basically follow it around the tunnels and keep knifing it through, and if it gets stuck on the door, open the door for it, etc. And eventually, it should fly up into the air outside the building itself and get stuck on the satellite dish right on top of the moon facility. 
Remember at the start of this guide, I said you should be spinning the mystery box for the wave gun? You're gonna need it now. Use the assembled form of the wave gun rather than the split form of it and shoot the ball off the satellite dish and it should then fly back down towards tunnel 11. Once again, same deal as before, you're going to be knifing it or shooting it through that tunnel anytime it gets stuck. It does get stuck in the roof sometimes here and it can be a little difficult to see, so keep an eye on it and uh, knife it through. And once you've finished this, it's going to basically get itself lodged inside the MPD itself. Inside the panel, in fact, on the front of the MPD. A soul jar will rise out of the floor next to the pyramid, and you need to kill 25 zombies to fill that jar up. It's basically going to absorb their souls as long as they're close enough when you kill them. Once you do that, there's a power switch just next to the MPD. You're going to hit the power switch and you'll get 90 second death machines and your girl Samantha will rise up out of the pyramid. All fairly spooky stuff. And at this point, you're actually going to get an achievement, the cryogenic slumber party. I recommend that as soon as you get the death machines, you go straight to Earth. So get on that telepad as soon as possible, go to Earth and earn yourself some points just shooting zombies in Area 51 using those death machines. And while you're there, somebody needs to throw a grenade towards the side area where these kind of shelves are. And if your nade lands in the right place or rather explodes in the right place, you should see two panels drop down and land on the floor. If you miss, then just chuck more nades. It's quite easy to do, to be honest. But then, once the panels are on the floor, get a Gersh device, throw it over to them, and suck the panels into it. They'll just float up inside, and the panels will then end up on the telepad that you're all no doubt standing right next to, and so you can teleport back to the moon, and it will bring the panels with you. Once you return to the moon, the panels will be just lying down next to the quick revive machine on the floor there. You need to throw a QED at them. It should rest on them for just a moment and then explode. And assuming you've done this correctly, the panels will fly over to the other side of the room and kind of plug themselves in to a computer in the corner there. Next up, you're going to need an S-shaped hose. And this thing is a little pesky because it has a lot of possible spawn points. So I'm going to run through all of the known locations from from the original version of this map and then any bonus locations will be listed in the description down below. So if you check the locations I'm about to show you and you don't find it, go to the description of this video and there'll be further locations listed. Here is a bit of gameplay of me finding it in my game on a desk. This is a spawn that used to be on the floor and now is on a desk. So just be wary that they've slightly changed the positions of these things. But if you check the description and check the video I'm about to show you, you should be fine. We're going to start our search in the bottom floor of the labs, take a look at the double tap machine, do a 180 and check that entire wall. Also, I recommend you check all the corners of all of the rooms of the labs because they are all possible spawns. Uh, and then we're going to mosey our way up to the first floor of the labs and once again here, check in the corners, specifically the far left corner is a likely spawn. You've also got a possible spawn against this stack of crates just here. Then if we go up the stairs even further, but not through the doors just yet, there is a possible spawn just outside on the floor, right at the top of that flight of stairs. Then if we go through the doors, there's one opposite Deadshot Daiquiri, but like I said just a moment ago, that has now been placed on the desk where it used to be on the floor. There's another to the right of Deadshot, and that was actually on a shelf before, so be wary of that one. There's another on a low shelf, just to the left of the door to the biodome, which is around where the wall buy is in that room. And finally, the cheekiest one of them all, there's one outside opposite the mule kick machine behind a pile of construction materials. So don't let that one fool you. It could be out there. Once you find it, the person that finds it needs to bring it to the computer in the spawn that you just ended up having the plates plugged into, and it should connect the two kind of, I guess, separate devices there. Then whoever's wrecked Finn in your game should go over to the computer, hold square on it, and essentially keep pressing square for the next little while because you're going to be chatting to that computer for the next three minutes or something. So make sure you've got a crawler. If you want to listen to the audio, try and keep that crawler away from the computer. And Richtfen needs to basically just have some alone time with the PC. Once the conversation's over, just hold square on it all to make sure that it's all done. 
And you should get the golden rod as well in your inventory, which is uh, very good because we need it for the next step. You'll see a load of soul boxes, or soul tubes I suppose, rise up out of the MPD's corners and you need to, once again, fill all four of them. The original one was just a single tube and it took 25 zombies, now we have four tubes, so that's 100 zombie kills and you need to make sure that you're killing them close enough to the tubes that the souls actually go in and fill them up. Once they've all been filled, Richtofen needs to place the golden rod into that panel on the front of the MPD, and you can also make sure that you've hit the switch on the side of the room like I mentioned before as well. And at this point, Richtofen should get all eight perks, which is going to be a beastly, but you're not actually quite finished yet. It's time for you to go and play more Samantha Says with the computer panels in the spawn, just like we did before. But this time, it's three games, and I think they're longer games as well, so... Have your best possible player in your game doing that while your other teammates just keep the zombies away from them or hoard a crawler around or whatever. And after three successful completions of the game, if you go back to the MPD, you'll notice that the ball in there has been knocked aside a little bit. You need to get a QED, that's a quantum entanglement device, and chuck it so that it bounces and explodes right in front of the MPD panel. It should make the ball disappear, and you'll then be able to find the ball again back at the Simon Says computer panels we were just using. Throw a Gersh device at the ball, it should suck the ball up, the ball will then be transported to the rockets behind you, and uh, at this point, the only thing really left to do is to watch the show unfold in front of you. This has been a no-nonsense easter egg guide for Moon. If you've enjoyed it, found it useful, etc, leave a like on the video, por favor, and I'll hopefully see you in some other no-nonsense guides on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I've been Mr. Ruffle Waffles. Subscribe as well, by the way, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.